Okay, so as we get more into the worked problems part of the course, I thought I would post a video covering an example problem we didn't quite have time to get to on Friday, but it is the last slide in the lecture notes. So the problem is a soccer player is 15 meters from her opponent's goal. She kicks the ball hard. After half a second, it flies past a defender who stands five meters away and continues towards the goal. How much time does the goalie have to move into position to block the kick from the moment the ball leaves the kicker's foot? You may assume there is no acceleration. So we've got some steps here that outline the process that we're going to want to follow for mostly every problem. The first and most important one is to draw a picture and to label everything. Then we're going to want to write down the quantities we know, what we're trying to find. We're going to try and think of a rule that we might be able to use to solve the question, and then we'll solve. And then at the end, we want to check if our answer is crazy. So let's go through that and see how it works in this case. All right, so we're over here and I've listed something that, or not listed, but typed out uh, what the question is so we don't have to look back at that. So the first thing we wanna do is draw a picture. All right, okay, so we've got our soccer player. And this is when they kick the ball. So we'll write kick there. A little bit later, the ball flies fast, flies past the defender, and they say yikes. So there's the ball continuing to move, and then a little bit later, the ball gets to the goal. There we go. There's our picture. That's all the more detailed the picture needs to be. But we do need to label everything, okay? So what we're gonna do is start labeling positions. So I've got X1, X2, and X3, because there are three positions that we're worrying about in this question, right? Where the ball starts, when it passes the defender, and when it gets to the goal. We've also got times that correspond to each of those positions. So I've got T1, T2, and T3. We've also got velocities in the X direction. So I got V1X, V2X, and V3X. Since I've started referring to an X axis, I wanna be good and draw which way is positive for that axis. So we've got an x-axis there now. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is write down everything we know. So, known. All right, x1, we're gonna call that zero meters, right, where the ball starts. We're always free to pick where the zero is for position and time, so we're just gonna say X1 is zero meters right there. So we're gonna do the same for T1. That zero seconds. X2 we're told is when the ball flies past the defender which is five meters away. And that happens half a second later. we're told the goal, or x3, is 15 meters away from x1. All right, so it's at 15 meters. Okay. All right, so that's all the numbers that we know at the moment. We might think of others. And what we're trying to find, always want to write this down too. We're trying to find how long the goalie has to move into position to block the kick from the moment the ball leaves the kicker's foot. So we're looking for the time difference. We're looking for T3 minus T1. Since we said T1 was zero, we're just looking for T3, which is nice. Okay, so now we've got our picture, We've got what we know, the picture's labeled, and we're looking for, 
we've listed what we can what we're trying to find okay an important thing that's listed in the question right is this part right here oops get rid of that is this part right at the end here where it says there is no acceleration right and if you remember from class no acceleration means that the velocity does not change All right so that gives us something else that we know which is that v1x is going to be the same as v2x and v3x so I'm just going to call that vx since that's the same okay we'll move down a little bit to give ourselves some space to work okay we're looking for t3 so let's think of something that we might be able to use well, we've got positions times and velocities and in class we've been talking about average velocity where the velocity in the x direction is the change in x divided by the change in time so let's try to use this for t3 I could say I'm gonna go from position 1 to 3 so I'm going from position 1 to position 3 and I do that from time 1 to time 3 notice that when I use these deltas here right the initial and the finals have to be the same for all the quantities so I have the same initial time as I do initial position those are both at point 1 same final time and final position those are both at point 3 we said x1 was going to be at 0 meters and t1 was at 0 seconds so vx is x3 divided by t3 excellent okay so now I know x3 right that's in my knowns but I don't know t3 or VX those are both things I don't know okay so let's try the same thing except maybe with another pair of points so we also know VX just Delta X over Delta T and let's go point between points 2 and 1 so I've got X2 minus X1 divided by T2 minus t1 so again I've got the same final position for both x and t it's position 2 and the same initial position for x and t it's position 1 just like before x1 and t1 are 0 so I get x2 over t2 and here right I know both of those whoops my color got mixed up there so I know both of those pieces of information so I can get VX so now we can solve for T3 alright so if I rewrite the equation above I'm gonna have T3 is equal to X3 divided by VX but I just found that Vx was equal to x2 divided by t2 t2 shows up in the denominator of the denominator so it flips up to the numerator so I get x3 divided by x2 times t2 we'll scroll down a little bit give ourselves a little bit more room so we can find that T3 
just write this again as x3 divided by x2 times t2. x3 we know is 15 meters divided by x2 which is 5 meters times t2 which was half a second. Notice that the meters cancel so I'm left with just seconds and that gives me 1.5 seconds. Alright, so we figured out the answer. T3 is one and a half seconds. That's how long the goalie has to react. We now need to see if the answer is crazy, or at least if it's, yeah, make sure it's not crazy. So one thing to check is that our answer is bigger than T2. Right? It should cross the goal after the ball goes past the defender. Right? This makes sense, but it's an easy thing to overlook. If we had messed up our division in one of the spots up above, you could see really easily where you might accidentally take 5 meters divided by 15 meters, and that would give you something less than half a second. So it's always good to check. So this is a nice check. All right, so that's one thing that we're not crazy. And also, it's smaller... than minutes. Right, we wouldn't expect the soccer ball to take minutes to get to the goalie, so it's good that our answer isn't that large. And that's a pretty good check to make sure that your answers aren't crazy. Right, it's hard to be precise with those, but you can typically compare it to other numbers in the question like we just did with comparing it to the half a second. We figured our T3 should be bigger than half a second, and it certainly was. Okay, so that is the full solution to that particular question. If you have any questions, by all means, let me know, and I hope this was helpful.